What's up, you beautiful people? Doran Aldana coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today I have a very special guest for you, the one and only Bernadette Laxamana. And we're going to share her true story of what happened in her real life, in her real business, as it relates to a real powerful breakthrough, namely how she went from literally in anxiety and overwhelm and stinking thinking prison where she was wondering how she was going to get herself back on track from having one of her best years ever in a very high level of, you know, seven figure production to sliding down the mountain and not knowing how to get herself back up and the suck of that regression. Many of you can relate since rates have gone up in late 2021. So you're going to really be able to connect to her story in terms of the suck of going backwards and losing her mojo and her swagger factor and her confidence and that pep in her step and that sparkle in her eye that she once had and how she reclaimed that power to produce and to recreate herself, reinvent herself and to get that sparkle back in her eye because what we're going to share with you today is how she added an extra 9.5 million in her pipeline and before we started airing this i found out that's actually outdated so it's actually more than that but i'll let her update you 9.5 million to her pipeline starting from scratch from no momentum whatsoever to doing all that by referral in just three months without inflicting yourself with the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. So if that's the kind of results that gets you intrigued, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned because that's precisely what Bernadette is about to share with you. So Bernadette, thank you for hanging with us today. I'm excited. I'm excited too. I am. I feel excited. I feel grateful. Uh, being with the program, learning from you has made significant difference in the way I run my business, the way I approach um, my my routine and all of that. So thank you. I, I'm deeply blessed and grateful to be here. Well, right back at you. I reciprocate all of that and then some. And it's been so amazing to see you blossom and bloom and create such a momentous and magnificent breakthrough in your business in the face of limited inventory, rising rates, all the headwinds blowing against you in the economy, in the market. And you found a way to create just this massive shift in momentum in such a short period of time. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to share your story, because I know it's an inspiration to me and I know it'll be an inspiration to many listening and watching. So why don't we just go back to three and a half, four months ago before you launched on Planet Prosper. It's probably hard if you're anything like me to reconnect to that, because once you step out of the darkness and into the light, it can be hard to reconnect to the darkness of where we came from. You know, it's not it's not something we human beings tend to like to go back to because it brings back a lot of unhappy emotions. So I, I just want to honor you for your courageous vulnerability and being willing to go there with me uh, for the sake of honoring your journey and the massive breakthrough you've had, but also for the sake of other people that are still in the suck of the struggle bus and the sleepless nights yeah. and the stress and all that. Yeah. So let's rewind the tape before we even get into before you launched on Planet Prosper. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're located, how long you've been in the business and what inspired you to get into this crazy business? Yeah, so um, I've been a mortgage broker for 20 years. And um, I, before that, I was working in a bank. And um, I guess the, I, I reach out to you, to, to you Doran, because uh, with, with what's happening with interest rates and what have you, it's been really, really tough. And um, I, I, I heard, I saw one of your. I saw one of your adverti uh, advertisements. And right. Who is this bald guy, right? Who's this bald <laughs> dude? What could he possibly offer me? <laughs> yes. And I don't know. I mean, it's like the universe thing. Like, you mm. know, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And um, I, yeah. I was at the dark, I was really at the dark place. And, um, and, and so as a mortgage broker, I was enjoying what I was doing. I became a mortgage broker because after working in a bank, I wanted to, 
make an even bigger difference because at the bank, I couldn't do what I could possibly do. Um, it's it's really different. It's very limited. And when somebody introduced me uh, about this mortgage uh, world, I it was for me. And uh, I did I did very well the first uh, few years. But then, you know, it was going up, going up, all of a sudden. <laughs> It wasn't anymore. <laughs> I'm sure but no was, one listening to this who's been in the business for more than a week or a day can relate to that, right? The sliding down the mountain and all the fear and worry and anxiety and imposter syndrome and all that that comes with it. I thought I thought I got it figured out, Doran. I mm. really did until about a couple of years ago when things just went lower and lower and lower and i i didn't know what else i could possibly do and my confidence like what you said in myself was really gone i i feel i felt stupid i felt i didn't i i just felt like i don't know anymore like mm. i i had no value i i i i didn't know um how else i can help people like once your confidence is gone <laughs> Yeah. The skill goes away, like it's gone. It's like gone. And and it felt like I wasn't doing anything right. You know, everything was wrong. Mm. So so it was it was really not a nice place after being so high and it was very humbling for sure. Yeah, and to have that contrast, like it's one thing to be on the struggle bus and see the income being scarce and the uncertainty about the future. And not knowing how to get out of that prison, not knowing how to create growth and get to the income goals and the impact goals that we have. It's one thing to have that. It's a whole other thing when you have that contrast, that stark contrast from like some of your best years, if not your best year yet, to literally immediately thereafter yeah. having things yeah. tank. And then it's like, whoa, the contrast is huge, right? It's a real rock mm -hmm. to the soul. So again, a lot of people I'm sure can relate to that being through what they've been through over the last few years in the business. I just spoke yeah. with a guy uh, just earlier today and he went from his best year yet in 2021 to like 30% off his income the year after that. And then another 30% off his income the year after that. And then even this year still tanking, right? So, you know, the struggle is real for a lot of people. You're certainly not the only one. And it's kind of cool because you're uh, a fellow Canuck in Canada yeah. and you're relatively close to me. You're in Vancouver. I'm in Kamloops. So, you know, you're only a three hour drive. So we're definitely going to have to hang out next time I come to Vancouver and come back to uh, where I used to live under that dark cloud of nine months of rain. And uh, <laughs> I lived in North Vancouver, which I'm pretty sure is the rainfall capital in all of Canada in deep cove of all places. Like it doesn't oh, yeah. stop raining there. So those who are from Vancouver or from maybe Washington, Seattle, you guys know what I'm talking about, like a lot of rain. So then you had rainfall, dark clouds, dreary weather, and your business is tanking. Like that's a special kind of suck that not many people can fully relate to unless you live in Vancouver or Seattle. That's just a little caveat. So let's go back to your story now. Let's rewind the tap tape like four months ago. Yeah. Your mojo has gone down the toilet. You're feeling that sense of powerlessness to fix. Tell us a little bit about uh, the most painful part of being in that suck of spinning your wheels and stagnation when you're in that constant suck of not knowing how to fix it and all the fear that comes with it. Take us back there. What was going through your head? What were your deepest fears? What was the most painful part for you at that stage? Oh. The most painful part is that absence of joy and no peace. Mm. It was such a terrible time. Um, mm. I had to escape somewhere. I, I got lost in like uh, fiction books because that's the only way I could turn it off. I had right. to escape because when I'm not reading, I'm faced with darkness like Reality. i don't know what else to do like there's there i couldn't come up with a solution i couldn't come up with a strategy i couldn't come up with a tactic i felt like everything i touch was just falling apart was mm. wrong was dumb mm. was stupid like that's bad that's wrong that's right there was no nothing right 
Um, I think it's because when when your confidence is down, nothing is pretty. Everything is ugly. Like the the yeah. lens, it was such a dirty lens um, at that point in time. And uh, and once I was in that place, everything that I looked at was just dirty and bad. Mm. So that's why wow. there's no joy. There's no peace. Like it's gone. I felt I lost myself mm. before that. I felt like I was Midas, you know, everything I touch was gold. <laughs> God, that's gold, that's gold, that's gold. I'm so, so good, you know? Uh-huh. And then for that, for two years, it was just down and down. And now I'm like, oh my God, like, wow. what am I doing? I'm such a stupid businesswoman. Like, I don't know. Wow. It's done. Yeah. It was yeah, like that. So you can hear the self-talk shift from the Midas touch, kicking ass, taking names, chewing bubble gum, crushing it everything you do doing is working and you're crushing it. And then it's the downward spiral of the foundation crumbling underneath you. And then the self-talk starting to crumble with it, the downward cycle and spiral of uh, all the imposter syndrome conversation you have with yourself. I suck, you know, a stupid businesswoman. And then of course there's the escape of, the only way I know how to cope is reading these fantasy books just to escape yeah. reality, right? Just to cope. Eight hours sometimes. Wow. And, you know, truth be told, there are worse coping mechanisms, just so you know, than fiction books. You know, there's uh, too much tequila, for example. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's uh, some people find their coping mechanism and just working, working, working and grinding longer and harder and harder and just pushing, pushing, pushing. And then their family gets the dregs and they're running on fumes and they're in complete burnout. Other people cope uh, by watching Netflix or movies or whatever entertainment is their choice. So it's a very common thing. There's coping mechanisms of all sorts. Some coping mechanisms are just the sugar coating of the problem. Oh, it's not so bad. Other people are doing worse, right? I'm still doing better than most. It's kind of like the fat guy that says, I'm not really fat. I'm just big boned, right? They're just softening the problem. Or it's like, I'm sure this will, the other coping mechanism is delusional optimism. That's very common where it's like, oh, the Fed says that rates are going to be cut this year. I just have to hold my breath a little longer, right? All of that you said was like me a year ago, (laughs) like a a couple of years ago. And then what I shared was a year ago. Like I went through all of that. (laughs) Yeah, Definitely. I went through like the denial phase. Like, oh, it's fine. It's all good. Denial is not just a river in Egypt, right? It's a real thing. So now you're in this place right before you reach out to us where you're coming to the end of your rope. Like you're realizing the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over expecting a different result. Totally. So you're getting to the end of yourself where you realize like, I need to do something about this. And like you say, by divine orchestration, this bald dude shows up in your newsfeed on Facebook Facebook. or something like this. Right. (laughs) And something inside you gets you to stop scrolling and read and then click and then register for the masterclass and then watch it and then respond by booking a call. So before we get to the, all that and what the transition was from the suck of the problem to the glory of the breakthrough that you've achieved in such short order, let's just take one more moment to marinate in the reality of what it was like for you before you launched on the planet prosper. If you could name one fear, one fear that was like your deepest fear, that kept you up the most at night and that stole your peace the most, stole your joy the most, what would you say that one, your biggest fear was at that stage? That I was going to be letting go of more people. Mm. Wow. Yeah, because I already Mm. did let go of people the year prior and I was afraid that I have to do it again. Wow. And I am left, I'm left now with core people. I was so worried that. What was your, you're obviously a very caring person, which is one of the reasons why our programs work so well for you. Cause I can't teach people to care. And I often say you can't be half pregnant. You can't half care. You either care, or you don't, and you care to your core, which is 
such a beautiful trait that has made this program so powerful and so effective for you because that is like the ultimate magnifier when you really care about people. So obviously there's a component of that in terms of you, you caring about your people and the impact that would have in their life to have to let them go. But let's go one layer deeper. What was your biggest fear around having to let them go? Was it the impact it was going to have on their family and their livelihood? Was it having to eventually go back to doing everything yourself and scrambling to be the chief cook and bottle washer, doing all the things you, that you don't like doing and being taxed with being a slave to your business again? Was it having to rehire people uh, once business picks up again and be like, man, it was so hard to find that person. Now I have to go through the drudgery in the hell of trying to replace that person that was so difficult to replace. Which one do you think was the, the heaviest weight for you? I think it's because the core people that are left are the ones who've been with me the longest. Mm, they're like family. So it means I'm letting them down. I'm letting their family down. A couple of them were single mom. Mm. So it's, I think in the core, in my core, that is like the ultimate failure that mm. I can't even keep my core people. That, that was wow. it. Like I felt that that was just the most f- f- terrible thing um, mm. it's just a signal how bad i am as a businesswoman wow. that i can't even keep my core people so it was more of like really deep-rooted identity that i was supposed to be the provider yeah. for these people and now i can't i, I can't even do it that wow. basic thing because the other yeah. people was a growth thing it's growth because i was i was expanding i could it was it hurt so much when i let them go but this is the core you know yeah yeah there's something yeah. deeper there their family you linked it to your identity which is something that i was thinking as you were saying it like this is flying in the face of your identity as who you used to see yourself as a successful businesswoman and the mother hen who takes care of her yeah. underlings right as provider and you, you, you gained a lot of uh, positive satisfaction from that, significance Absolutely. and satisfaction from that identity. And then the floor just falls out from underneath you. The foundation crumbles. So you guys are getting connected to where Bernadette was literally three and a half, four months ago. Like this is not very far back that we're going. Now you have this real talk conversation with this bald dude, this, you know, Doran Aldana guy. And tell me about that conversation for a moment, because obviously, you know, it was some real talk around where you're at, where you want to go and the impact and ramifications of staying on the trajectory you're on. What was well, going to your mind and heart going through that conversation with me? I had to I mentioned to you that this, what had happened, I think, It shapes us. And I think it was a character building, identity building. It's humbling. All my life in the past 20 years, my business has never been realtor based. When I first started, I think my business was 15% from realtor. Um, And then over the years, it was like 2% realtor, you know? And so again, in terms of identity, I'm so proud of the fact that I grew my business without realtors. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, fantastic, right? What and, and all of that. And then as things shifted and stuff like that, I kept hearing about a lot of people, you know, that's that's one of their pillars of their business realtor relationship. And then I think what has happened when I saw that, it's probably because again, even though I was reading to escape, I'm also I've also been praying. And then um in my head, I had a thought that maybe it's time to learn new things. Like what you said, <laughs> the hands in the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Like, I think it's time to do something different, to change it up. Mm-hmm. And I remember telling my husband about it. And my husband's like, You've never been realtor focused. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is one thing. I'm like, I know, but you know, the way it's happening, I think I, I, I'm, I'm young enough. <laughs> I think that I can learn new tricks. Um, And so that, I think I was already in that mindset. That's why when that came, um, when I saw that, it was very compelling for me because 
I couldn't fathom the idea of cold calling realtors. I can't like I just like what cold calling in it. Um, I also had a like the, the the core. I attended the core, and that's one of the things that they the, the pillars that they have. And so when I saw that again, maybe Facebook has is connected to my neurology, and that's why I was able to <laughs> your reticular <laughs> activator, your reticular activator, yeah. the RAS reticular activation yeah. system. Just like when you buy a new car, you get a Tesla. You see Teslas everywhere, right? Exactly. No, there's no um, The messaging was perfect, you know, when I saw that. And then I clicked on the link that showed that, you know, you have to watch it. I think it's a 30 minute thing. And I typically don't stay for those things, but I did. I did. I stayed on. And after the 30 minutes, like I really stayed on and took notes and stuff like that. And I guess my I was open. I was really open. Hey, I was really rock rock bottom, right? So come on, <laughs> you right? Mean? Yeah, you were hungry. You were really, thirsty. Really, I was hungry, thirsty, and this was like Nirvana Oasis or whatever that was. And so I said, okay. And then I booked. I booked a time with you, and um, that was that was really good because I, I, I knew that it was you that I needed. I wasn't sure if I had this, I would have had the same, if it wasn't you, it, there was something in our conversation that, that helped me because mind you, I just saw, think about this, Doran. I just saw you the thing on Facebook and then I watched for 30 minutes and then I talked to you for an hour and I signed up for this big thing that I didn't even, you know, I didn't, <laughs> I, <laughs> you probably surprised yourself, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I did. What was I it? Did, what did. was it that got you so surprised with yourself that you would make such a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself outside of your normal character of maybe being a little bit more measured and calculated and maybe postponing the decision? What had you decide to say, screw it, let's do it, in spite of the fact that this was not your normal way of maybe doing things in terms of being decisive and striking while the iron is hot? Um, you know, I think what made the difference was you heard me. Mm. Um, we talked about what was going on and I, I, in my heart, like I think it was more of a heart and a spiritual connection at that point. Yeah. I felt heard. Whew. I felt understood. Um, yeah. And I felt that that you you knew what was needed to to make that um, turn around, and so I said. I think I think this is good. I I, I think let like, you know, sign me up, and wow. um, I think it was it was a, a really good investment on my part. Well, I did. apparently, because we're about to get into the results, and they're pretty dang phenomenal to say the <laughs> least. But I, I love what I just experienced in that wave of mo of emotion for you, because that really speaks to the power of compassion empathy yeah. and really connecting to someone soul to soul as to where they're at and really having them feel heard because you really care and you want to hear them. You want to hear them, not just at a head level, but a heart level. And that's really what we're all about here on planet prosper. It's not about just slam dunking people into a program. It's let's have an honest conversation. Let's see whether or not we have the right synergy and the right connection to help you. Let's not try and just, you know, cram you into a conveyor belt solution. That's not how this works. This is about synergy. This is about working as a partnership. And that means we have to have the right chemistry and we need to be mind connected, heart connected, where we really can work together as a team. So obviously we had sparks flying connection. I knew that from the first moment I got on the phone with you, you're so transparent, vulnerable, open, honest. And so you've just been an absolute delight to work with. I, I would say to anybody, if I could press the repeat button on you, I do that all day long on Sundays. You've been such a joy. So let's now fast forward. You said, screw it, let's do it. You launched on Planet Prosper. Tell us about the first maybe week landing on Planet Prosper. What did we ask you to do that perhaps you felt a little skeptical about like, Dorn, are you kidding me? You're going to get me to do that? Really? 
you really think that's going to work? Tell us about maybe something or a particular strategy or challenge we gave you or a specific tactic that maybe sets you off or had you feel way out of your comfort zone, maybe even a little alarmed that you're actually doing this. Like, this is weird. Why would I do this? Tell us about that. Because something tells me people need to hear what it looks like to be on the other side, looking in and realize that this is really about being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And there's stuff that really stretches out of our comfort zone. What was it for you? The first of all, the one thing that I really, that was really good that there, before I go to the uncomfortable, um, one thing that you insisted upon us was to watch the video. Like there's a week one, week two and week three, I guess we have, uncomfortable was I wanted to go to the freaking two, three, four, six. What do you mean I have to wait till the after a week after I can get to the second the thing? Whole like, week. This is stupid. Like, you know, like I'm ready. Like, right. Don't hold know? me back, Doran. Let me just sip from the fire hose and take it all in all at once. <laughs> and then after I watched it, you said you have to watch this thing two to three times. Like, what the bloody heck? Like, I already watched it. You mean I'm going to want to watch it again? Are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> three times the same thing? How boring. Okay, and I'm just like, I just tell my trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. And then, so I, I did. So I, I watched it. And then, the, and then you said, the time you watch it is when you're working out. I'm like, dang it. I'm working more. Just watch the thing. I'm like, fine. So I just... <laughs> So, so the thing was, it was really true. It was important not to get into the second one. It was important mm. to watch it one, two, three times because each time I watched it, the mindset got deeper and deeper because the thing that you were teaching was mindset, strategy, and tactic. Mm -hmm. But it's so easy to miss the mindset. But because I kept watching and watching, it got deeper and deeper in my head. And, um, and so I did, so I did all of that. So by the time I launched, I already watched the stuff a few times. And then when I launched, I actually had to go back to what I said. I already watched, I was like, oh, no wonder he said, why well, I really needed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's for like, someone who's already listened to it three times. Imagine yeah. the other people that only watch it once, right? I know. So yeah, it made total sense whatever he said just listen because even if you're like fighting in your head like, oh, no but it was really helpful so that's one of the things that i love about you bernadette is that you are all in you are an all yeah. in in it to win it individual like you don't half ass you full ass you're all in and all in is the only way to win yeah. so bernadette has just brought this coachability that has been the dust on top of outstanding. We say jump. She says how high, and she's just been all over it. Just totally committed, totally coachable, ready to receive, ready to empty your cup so we can fill it with your dream. We say, listen to each model three times. You're doing it at least three times and then some. So your coachability has certainly been a huge part of your success. And there's been a lot of stuff we've asked you to do that's pretty outside of the comfort zone. So that's saying something um, that certainly mastery and pursuit of mastery is inextricably linked with what it takes to get massive results in anything, whether it be martial arts, dance, learning an instrument, learning how to be a excellent mortgage broker or loan officer. And certainly when it comes to attracting realtors, mastery comes through repetition, repetition, repetition. So you brought that in then some, let's talk about some of the tactics because what we did is we took you from never pursuing realtors, let alone top producers. And we gave you a playbook to do it in a way where you're attracting versus chasing to do it in a way where you're sifting and sorting versus selling to do it in a way where you get to maintain your power, your posture, your composure, your dignity, through the whole process, instead of begging, bribing, and butt kissing and groveling, very different energy in those two different paradigms and ways of doing things. So we built a list of your top producing realtors. I think it was about a hundred, right? 
Yes, correct. But a hundred realtors, they're all successful realtors who have the most amount of five-star reviews in your area, established realtors. Uh, a lot of them were people that you already knew about or knew of, or they already knew you and you knew them because you've been in the business for a while and you've done a lot of transactions together. Is that true? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So That's right. You had this list, but they weren't necessarily sending you business. No. And then we gave you an approach to reach out to them by text, by email, and then make a phone call, make an overture to book a, a meeting and to take them through a two-step process. Diagnose first, prescribe second, because until and unless they own the problem, they're not going to buy your solution. Right? That's right. So we taught you that. And then you landed, as far as I recollect, third, uh, rather you booked 30 appointments in your first 30 days, as far as I recollect. Is that accurate? Yeah, I did. I did. 30 appointments. When's the last time you guys booked even 10 appointments in 30 days, let alone 30? Like that's called massive action guys, in case you didn't know. 30 appointments in 30 days. And out of that, how many partners did you get with top producing realtors? Um, I have 12 partners. 12 partners. Are you sure that All that's done. up to date? Because I think it was more like 16. Yeah, or something. <laughs> yeah 16. Uh, 16. <laughs> Based on that little yeah, spreadsheet really, you sent me, yeah. I think it was 16. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot because I, I know <laughs> the numbers because you sent me the numbers. Yeah. But so 12, 16, close enough. <laughs> and out of those 16 you've had a huge avalanche in business. Let's pull up the screen and show people uh, what has transpired from those 30 appointments and those 16 partners, shall we? Sure. Okay, so we got a bunch of numbers on the screen. Walk us through this, B. I know this is a little outdated. It's two weeks old. So you have some up-to-date numbers that maybe you can just narrate uh, to catch people up to speed. But this week, these were the numbers two weeks ago, guys. So B, explain what this is for people who are trying to decipher all these different columns and numbers. Right. So basically what I did is everybody who said, yes, I want to be a VIP partner. I created this spreadsheet because the purpose is I wanted to see how many am I receiving? How many referrals I wanted? Receive means how many referrals, like number of referrals. So each time they refer somebody to me, um, I have a spreadsheet for each realtor and it, it adds it up here. This is like the, this is the master list. So for realtor one, for example, I received one, I gave one. And live received is when actually it goes live. Because there's, you know, when they refer you deals, that doesn't really count until it it actually goes live, right? right. So, so that's why I separated the received and the live. Now, the given, most of the time, the given is live. Because every time I give someone, they, they go live. So again, um, the value so you that gave we- 20, you gave 20 referrals to your referral partners? Yes. I that's did. off the chain. That is phenomenal. Yes. How are you finding a way to give 20 referrals to your partners? Are these buyers? Are these sellers? Is it a mix of both? What are you you doing to generate so much business for your partners? That's outstanding. Yes. Um, So thank you. This is the power of the team. Um, This is why this model works. So I am dedicated to the referrals of the realtors. My other two ma- two teammates, they're dedicated to our past clients and all of that. They're really taking care of the database and all of that. And so what happens is when they have a buyer, then they refer it to our team. But every time a realtor has a referral, I'm on the phone. Like, because I'm not busy with, you know, with the other stuff, right? That's why when the realtor calls for emails, I'm, I'm here, I'm available. They're like, whoa, you know, and then... And then when they refer me a client, I, my turnaround time, like I had one within like a day. I had full approval, all conditions and all of that within the day. So I pride myself with that quick service with, you know, daily turnaround, a daily update, like turnaround. They're just blown away how fast and how efficient and how much, how great it is to work with me because these people are not waiting. 
Um, this realtor just referred somebody to me. He, he referred, she referred her teammate. She sent the email. And within like five minutes, I called. And she says, I told you, she's going right? to call. <laughs> Reputation for speed. And that's one of the reasons, again, why this program has been so powerful for you, because it doesn't matter how powerful the marketing plan is. If you suck at what you do, great marketing is just going to speed up the rate at which people find out you suck. Right. So that's not going to help much. That has certainly not been the case for you, obviously. I mean, yeah. you've gotten 55 plus referrals and that was two weeks ago. It's a lot more now. 55 referrals in two months of working with 16 partners that you attracted over the span of 30 days without cold calling or kissing butts. That is phenomenal. I'm still curious to know, like, I'm going to go back to my original question. How are you giving these realtors, like you gave these realtors 20 referrals 20 referrals. And at the time, two weeks ago, it was just under $8 million worth of business. Yes. How did you, how, how did you get so much business for your partners? Because I have a, I, because I really am working hard. I have the other, my other funnels. This is just one of the funnel. The other funnel is we still go in, like touch, reaching out to clients, having first time home buyer events, having real estate. So I, the others who are still working. Remember, not only 2% of my business were realtors, right? So now this is another one. So I, right. it's just another thing. What I learned, like anytime I learned from you, it's just an other thing. I didn't shut down the other things that right. I was doing. Gotcha. I didn't. So all the business you were doing before direct to consumer and the seminars and the uh, various different referral business and database marketing, marketing. database marketing, like all of that was being 10 X like, you know, I'm just like all of those things. So now you're plugging it in to your partners. Correct. Bringing them in business, not just being a lone leech, like every other Tom, Dick and Harry in the mortgage business, just trying to take you're bringing. Yes. And, and I think that's the part when you kept asking me why am I like, I couldn't sleep well. I, I wouldn't have joy and peace of mind if I was just receiving. I think I told you that I can't, I, I couldn't do it. And so I guess because I prayed for it, I wanted it for them. I made it happen. Like we made it happen. It's not me. It's the team. So you're right. The number is off because so far we've gotten 62 referrals. We received 11 million in live business and we've given 13.7 million. Wow. You've given more than you've received. That's phenomenal. We've That's unheard of in this space. Just so you know, that is unheard of. You never see yeah. that. You yeah. are a rare unicorn indeed, Bernadette. You truly are. That is outstanding. Yeah. And again, these partners, that was three, just two and a half months ago that you brought these partners on board. Yes. Right? So we launched my, my RMAF in January, right? So yeah. this was really launched in January. And so if you think about it, you know, you book it and then you, you do your discovery and then you do your show and tell, and then, and, and so by the time they really said, I want to be a VIP partner, it was really like third week of January, if you really think about it. Third right. week, and some of them did this in Feb, right? Yeah. So it's been really two months of nurturing these relationships. Yes. Wow. And so 11 million in the pipeline from one month of appointment setting and yeah. appointment doing and two months of nurturing relationships with 16 partners. Yes. And 13 correct. million in deals given to those partners yes. within two months. Correct. Just absolutely outstanding. So this, if we were to do the math on this and just take this pipeline of 11 million and break it up into months. Is that over two months, three months, four months? How many months is that packed into? I would say two and a half, I guess. Okay. So let's just be conservative. Let's just call it 9 million over two months, which is kind of in sync with this uh, spreadsheet anyway. So that's like 44.5 million a month on average right now after two months of nurturing these relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So if someone was to making a hundred basis points, which is 
pretty normative in the industry across both U S and Canada, a hundred million or a hundred basis points is pretty standard. Then we're looking at 45,000 a month in revenue on a hundred basis points, which is over half a million a year in income that you've built from scratch, from a standing start. You'd never worked with realtors before all within three months. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. That is off the chain, Bernadette. That's off the hook. That's Mm -hmm. insane. Making surge in money. And it took you three months. Now you've obviously been in the business a long time. You got a lot to offer. You're extraordinary at what you do. So there's a lot of, you know, it's like the overnight success that took two decades. Right. But we helped to unlock a lot of what you already had sitting Latent, a lot of assets that were sitting latent, collecting collecting dust that weren't really being fully leveraged. What about for the person who's new to the business? They're like, Dorn, Bernadette, would this work for me? I mean, I don't have a database. I don't have all that momentum. I don't have all the, the events and all the leads that you're getting from other sources. I don't have the ability to send a whole lot of business from what I'm already doing to my partners. Is this just for people like Bernadette that are experienced and that have a, you know, a big database been doing it for two decades and have a lot of leads they can send their partners uh, before this kind of system would work. Can you speak to that for a moment? I, I think the bottom line is what do you really, really want? I am creating what I wanted, Doran. Like you, you know this about me. It was important for me to fill up the given side, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I created. So if you are new and your want is to add value to the realtor, that will alone will speak to the realtors. That alone will give you business. So it, each of us will create something from what we truly want to create. Each of us... I cannot be the mortgage broker for every single, you know, gazillion thousand realtors out there. And all of us here will will add value and give great service to a certain type of realtor. I am cornering this area of my world. You would be doing that in your world. Just be very clear about the value you are giving. And, and the program, like Doran's program, is giving you the mindset, the strategy, and the tactics tactic just trust the day trust the process it really works because these realtors did not really experience the other part until they started working with me but they raised their hand right, right. they didn't expect this much but it's because we listen the same reason how Doreen, you attracted me to your space you listened and you understood where I was coming from. And I'm here. The same thing with the realtors. I think if you just do this thing, do the work, do the discovery, do the show and tell, they will raise their hand. And then give the service that, you know, when they call, pick up the phone, when they email, because that was a wow. And then make them feel that there's no other client. I mean, all of us could do that. And that alone will be like, wow factor. For that. Absolutely. I often say in the land of the blind, the one eyed man is king. It doesn't take much to stand out. And the reason why you not only attract realtors so powerfully and more importantly, keep them and cultivate them and take them from an associate to a brand ambassador in such a short period of time. I mean, we're talking two weeks or two months. That's an exceedingly short period of time when they already have a lender, they already have a mortgage broker, they already have relationships. How is it that you do that? It's because you care so much. When they call, you answer. When you email, they answer. When you book an appointment, you show up on time. You show up present. You you show up ready to serve. Like you think that's that's standard procedure for most people for the average human being, but it's not. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Yes, and you have to sell what you do. Like some of us don't. So when they call and like, see how important you're a VIP to me. That's why when you call, I answer the phone. See, you're a VIP to me. So when you email, see, you're a VIP to me. So when you send me a client within 24 hours, I have an approval. I don't do this right now. Only a VIP. Like I always say it because you're a VIP partner. Because like I always, you know, make sure that I mention the value that I give them so that it sticks because they, they, they don't remember that you're 
they, they don't remember that you're going above and beyond for them. Yeah. And then because you're saying that and nobody else is saying that, you stand out. So amazing. It works. Yeah, you got to remind them because otherwise they just think that's kind of normal. Like, obviously, they know it's not normal compared to their other experiences with mortgage brokers and other banker bankers that they may have work, worked with in the past. So from that standpoint, but to communicate it in a way where it's like, hey, this is what I do exclusively for my VIP partners, reminding them this is part of your value stack. This is part of your red carpet service that you do for your VIP partners. So let's go a little deeper real quick before we wrap up. What are maybe the top one, two or three strategies that you've used over the last three months that you feel have made the biggest difference? Because obviously we provide a lot of strategies, even to brand spanking newbies to bring value to the partners, whether it be helping them uh, resurrect dead leads and to offer what you got pre-approved buyers or getting, getting more leads as their open houses, converting more of those leads into closings, getting more five-star reviews on Google, turning those reviews into referrals, mining the gold from the database, maximizing repeat and referral business. Uh, some cool ways to get more listings. So we have a lot of arrows in the quiver, as you know, to bring that value and to help them actually br- get it, get more buyers and sellers versus just being a lone leech and taking. But what are the top, if you had to choose the top three strategies that you feel have made the biggest impact in terms of the value you bring to your partners and the success of what you've been able to accomplish in such a short period of time, what would you say are the top three things that you feel are like the mission critical pieces that have made the biggest difference for you? Um, I think that each realtor that I spoke to, the mission critical thing is you really need to hear what is important to them and then make sure you deliver that. Um, I think that's what you told me because you told me, don't just give a smorgasbord of everything, like listen to what's really important to them. And um, that, that is like the one key thing, because if I'm going to tell you, like I, I did offer that, like the move too, but it was more of a, more of a gravy, but it, was, it wasn't the main dish. Mm. Um, so each realtor told me what was really important to them. And, mm. and that's what I gave. Uh, so it, it, it's truly custom, custom tailored that stuck with me because remember I told, I told you the show and tell, can I just have like a, like, um, I don't know, a generic thing. He said, no, 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 Bernadette can't do that. So, so when you say it's like, it's like a, like a, like a tactic thing, it's more of a strategic thing, really. Mm. Um, I, they know all about move to, they know about all those other things. But what made a really key difference is for, for them to talk to me when they need me. Um, I, sometimes I know we're not supposed to be catering to them nighttime weekends, but really the, the odds of them doing that is not all the time. But knowing that if they do, I am there. Yeah. Like the odd times that they do. They respect my time, but sometimes they need me um, outside normal uh, now normal hours, and I'm there. So that was that was a big thing um, for for them. And I do it with joy. I didn't do it as a as a oh you're bothering me type of thing mm-hmm. because these are VIP partners. Come on, they've given me you know so far eleven million now. So so so, so <laughs> and them thirteen million from you to them. So and, and you've been yeah. you've been leading by example and then some. Exactly. So yeah, if, if you really just write down what, what it is, the, the things that was really different, it's a secret, I guess now it's not a so secret anymore, the daily updates. Mm. So if, if they send me a contract every day, I tell them what's happening to their client. Nobody else does that. And, and then the 24 hour approval, including conditions, nobody else does that. So, so those little things speed. that were speed and communication, speed and communication. And when they need me, I'm there. So those are the top three ingredients, really, uh, the tactics that have been really important because we, during the conversation, that's what they said mattered to them so much. So the others were like perks. Yeah. Well, it's like, I kind of like to think about it as like ET, the movie ET, 
you probably remember if you've watched it, you got the little Reese's pieces, the trail of Reese's pieces that lead, you know, lead the alien ET out of the house and towards the, the boy. And it's been a long time, but I still remember to this day how poignant and powerful that scene was of the Reese's pieces. And a lot of the value stack that we bring, it just leads them into the sacred space of having synergy with someone who really cares and really delivers and is really committed to being integrous with their word and under promises and over delivers and have that, has that be a new normal, like having that be not just the rarity, but the new normal of how they operate with their partners. So you've certainly given us a beautiful example of what that looks like. You're a living, breathing example of that, an embodiment of that. And I just want to honor you for not only the amazing blessing and delight it's been to serve you to this breakthrough. That's just the beginning, just the scratching of the surface of the surface of the surface for you. We're just getting warmed up. It's only been two months. Come on, two months. And it's already been 11 million in the pipeline. Like that's phenomenal. You're just absolutely getting cooking here, but you're not even remotely close to being done. But I also want to honor you for who you are, for your partners, who you are, for your team, your big heart, you really care and uh, you bring your best, everything you do. And that's really the, our mantra here on Planet Prosper is do your best and trust God with the rest. And you've really stepped into enormous growth. It's been such a joy to see you step into growing in your faith, growing in your uh, surrender, growing in your love for your people, love for God, love for yourself. And I've just been wondering what the biggest thing is for you that you're most excited about now that it's been just two months into this journey. What are you most excited about after all that's happened in three months that you're most jacked and stacked about stepping into next? Um, before I go to the very excited part, I didn't talk about the biggest, the most amazing value that you have given to me. You have helped oh. me be closer to God. For sure. Mm. Um, definitely, because we've had a lot of amazing conversations when I've lost my way. And um, my my success has always been about me, my capability. Me, 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 me. It's me. If it's not working, it's me. If it's working, it's me. Now it's no longer like that. It's more him. And that has been something that we've worked hard not work hard we've worked on mm. religiously every time we had a conversation so that's huge huge factor so compared to before i have more peace of mind i have more joy i've i've i've, I've risen i'm no longer down there i'm more up, up up with him most of the time not all the time obviously most of the time and so that's i think when it comes to excitement I'm, that's what i'm most excited about because Beautiful. To have that joy and that peace, to have a business that's dedicated for him, to him, by him, it's, it's immense. When I am challenged with a partner, with a client, I just pray it's up and just pray it's up. And so, so that's that's huge. So thank you uh, uh, for that. And <laughs> and then with, with excitement with the partners, the other thing, like I I, I mentioned to you about those uh, little things, the quick service and stuff. There's other things they ask me, like, what do I do? Which you taught me if they want to hire someone, what to do. If they're having challenge with balance, you know, I gave them, I give them the advice. Like, again, that, that weekly what's next meeting was talking about that. Um, I gave them the contract to hiring. I gave them um, different strategies about where to post the job. Like those extras, um, because you told me like when you listen to them and, and provide that. So again, what I'm excited about is how can I add more value? How can I make an even bigger difference? How can I go deeper? Which again, you taught me. It's not about wider. It's not about deeper. I'm not really excited about adding more. Um, I would like to go deeper with these people. And if I happen to attract someone, great. Um, and right now, it's just nice that if they need me, I am there. And whatever they I could provide, I am here. So that's what's the exciting part. Bernadette, I'm so proud of you. 
It's just been such a joy to see you bloom and blossom. And it reminds me of Jim Rohn. One of the things he teaches, the late and great Jim Rohn, is that you want to set big goals for yourself, big, hairy, audacious goals, God-sized dreams, as I would call it, uh, because it's not the achievement of the million dollars or the multi-million dollar business that's your greatest prize. Once you achieve it, what you realize your greatest prize is who you become in the process. Absolutely. And after Absolutely. Just three short months together, I mean, who you become in anchoring your peace to God, not to your performance, not to a number, not to your bank account, to have your peace and joy be rock solid in something that no one can take away that allows you to be filled with the light of God in your life, to be, be more of a blessing to those around you, your partners, your family. Uh, that's just, there's nothing more valuable in my mind than to have the very thing at the end of the day, we all want, why do we say we want more money, more achievement, more income, more closings, more commissions? Cause we think that's going to make us happy, more joy, more yeah. peace, more sense of significance, but to have it in advance and to have that joy and peace be anchored to something that can never be taken away. Yes. Yeah regardless of market conditions, inventory yeah. rates, et cetera, is an immeasurable gift. And I am so blessed to see you anchor that gift in your own soul and to walk forth in your life now from that solid place of peace and joy that's unshakable. That's obviously we're human. So we're going to have those moments where turbulence hits, but to have it be anchored to something beyond circumstance there's yeah. nothing more valuable than that. So yeah. I am so overjoyed to be part of that process with you and to see the fact that it's only been three months and to know the fact that you're just getting warmed up and you're going to just continue to soar and spread your wings as the ego that you are. That gets me really fired up because I know you're just scratching the surface of the surface of your potential. Thank you, Doran. I'm glad to be partners with you in this journey. I appreciate everything that you're teaching me, you're inspiring me, and you're helping with. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being in my life. The feeling is mutual, my dear. I'm so blessed to be on the journey with you. And so if you guys are listening to this, watching this, you're like, this is kind of an unusual business conversation. This is not a normal conversation to be talking about growing in faith, growing in God, growing in peace and joy that's unshakable and unperturbable, that's anchored to something beyond your performance or your bank account. And you just know that there's something about that that you need in your life, whether it be growing in your ability to create the life of your dreams for your family, for those that you care about, making the income you want, the freedom that you want. Certainly that's available. Bernadette has shown that in spades or whether it's just you having more peace and joy in your life by having a formula, a, a blueprint that allows you to become the best version of yourself. So you can create your blessed life, your best life. All of that has certainly been on display today. And then some in Bernadette's story, if you're listening to this, you're watching it. You're like, I need me some more of that. I'm in a funk. I'm in stagnation. I'm in regression. I'm just spinning my wheels in the same spot. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being stuck. And I'm ready to take a next step in exploring how I can create a breakthrough, just like Bernadette did. If that's you, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call, just like Bernadette did just four, three and a half months ago. You can do that by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Same link we gave to Bernadette just three and a half, four months ago. And you can yes, do it. Right. It's just the beginning of the yes, process. Do right? it. <laughs> Bernadette's like, hey, just do it. You can't lose by having an honest conversation no. with people who really care, who just want to connect with a fellow soul and see how we can serve. So if that's you, go ahead and book a call. Let's have an honest conversation. Let's see how we can help. And if we can, we'll show you what that looks like. If we can't, we'll show you something else that maybe is better for the particular season you're in. Either way, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun and we're going to have a real honest, connected conversation. So again, the, meet, the call link for that is mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And it was the first step for Bernadette. 
And chances are, if we're the right fit, it'll be the first step for you to have a massive breakthrough in your life where you look back and you say, how is that possible? I struggled for two years, banging my head against the wall. And within three months, within two months, look at where I am now. That's precisely what has happened for Bernadette. And that's precisely what can happen for you too. Lots can happen in a very short period of time. When we get you digging the foundation for your skyscraper, your dream with an excavator versus the shovel. When we get you filling the swimming pool of your dream with a full blown fire hose versus a squirt gun. Lots can happen. It's called leverage friends. It's called unlocking your full potential. So Bernadette, Thank you again for your time. It's been such a delight to connect and hang out with you and see how far you've come. Can't wait to see what's next for you. I'm going to have to stay in touch on a regular basis because one and a half million within just a couple uh, weeks of us not talking is uh, a sign. I'm probably going to need to get an update at least once a week to see the stratospheric results that are coming because the avalanche of awesome is definitely just starting. We're just seeing the surface of the surface. Can't wait to see what's next. Well, thank you, Doran. I'm, I'm always open to be chatting with you at any time. It's such a joy. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, we just had a hangout with the one and only Bernadette Lexamana. My name is Doran Aldana, the mortgage marketing coach. And we just talked about how Bernadette created a 9.5 updated to 11 million. That's the latest now $11 million pipeline from scratch with realtors when she'd never worked with realtors before without cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts all within three short months. So again, if you'd like to learn how you can do likewise, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you soon, guys. Be blessed. And again, to create your best life, your blessed life, you got to be under the spout where all the good stuff pours out, which is getting comfortable, being uncomfortable, swimming upstream against the current of average, against the current of your comfort zone, and expanding yourself into the best version of yourself. So go forth, take massive action, and chances are you're going to get massive results. Be blessed, y'all. Thanks for hanging with us. Peace, y'all.